Hey, good morning guys. Eric here again. Uh, I'm trying to make some useful videos kind of tailored to newer divers especially, and this one is going to be about how I personally set up my kayak. Uh, when I kayak dive, I really want a light kayak because I'm usually like lowering it down cliffs and Big Sur and stuff. So I didn't choose to get one with all of the fancy storage that, you know, I think this is 47 pounds um, dry. And, uh, and some of the other ones can run, you know, upwards of 100 pounds. So this one I can carry no problem. Just a quick shot of the python lock that I use when I keep it at home or on my racks. I just put this in through the scupper hole and it, uh, and it closes it down pretty easily. Um, but for setting it up, I'm going to start with the anchoring system. This bungee just hooks straight to the back. And you want a bungee because if you're in swells like today um, and you're anchored to some rock with a hard line, you could potentially rip something out on your kayak, damage the kayak, or rip out of the rock and have it not stay. So this allows for lots of flexibility um, while there's surge and stuff going through the water. So I just clip that right up here for rowing. And then there's two ways to anchor your kayak. The first one's really simple. It's just a kelp clip, which goes on the front of this. And I paddle up next to some kelp and clip it on. And um, that's, that's all you need to do there. But if you're not around kelp, since Northern California is having a lot of kelp issues, uh, I have this simple uh, anchor set up. And so a few tricks that I've learned from guys way smarter than me is on the chain side, you'll see here that I have two really weak zip ties and, and then it's tethered to the top. So what that does is when this is deployed and caught onto something, it's gonna have, the zip ties are strong enough to keep my kayak in place. But if, if I'm in deep water and I don't feel like diving down to retrieve my kayak, I can just yank really hard on it and break these zip ties, which then flips this around and I'm pulling it up from the top, which will release it. So that's kind of a safety thing, especially for guys that fish in rivers and stuff, they all recommend doing it that way. And then I just have a bunch of 550 paracord wrapped around this. Um, from what I'm told, you use like for every foot of water you're in, you use like three feet of line out just to give it the right scope. Now, as you're loading up your kayak, you wanna have everything tethered so that if it flips, you have security and you're not gonna lose a bunch of stuff. So you'll see me as I'm loading it up, just make sure that everything's clipped in. Uh, my fins very easily just store right in the front. They're easy to get to, get on, in, uh, on and off of the kayak. Um, and then they, they're pretty, actually pretty secure. Um, I just got a rad new uh, Polo Sub wetsuit. Really thankful for Bamboo Reef having uh, hooked me up with that. I, I had it custom made to my size and I had uh, them add an extra inch in the armpits and around the neck because when I'm paddling long distances, I really don't uh, like to have to fight the suit. So that's gonna give me a little more flexibility in paddling and not feel like I'm constantly getting strangled by the neck. So that will be worn as I paddle. Next is the dive gear. Um, I try to wear as little as possible as far as all the accessories and stuff go. So I bring one bag for dive gear and one bag for fish. So the, the bag for the dive gear sits up front with me. Um, I don't like to wear my thick gloves while paddling because it actually wears out your hands a lot faster. So I've got some simple Rapala gloves like this, like garden gloves basically that are way thinner but help protect from the blisters. So GoPro, Shark Shield, all the loose little stuff. I always keep a water bottle up front with me, even a snack bar if I know it's gonna be a long day. I've got a tuna clip on, on the bag and I just set this right up here with me and clip it in so that it's always accessible and when I'm ready to dive, I can just get in there and not have to reach around behind me or anything. The 
fish bag and my gun. This very naturally fits in an oar lock, which is awesome. And then I just bring it under here and clip it. And that will stay just like that. Uh, that's my backup gun. This is my primary gun, Heronin 80. And then to secure that, I actually like to get my float line, clip it to the back of the gun, and then store the float line, just give it a wrap. Because all that float line, my gun's not gonna get lost. Um, and it's very unlikely to unwrap from that as well. So I find that's pretty secure. And then on my fish bag, just clip that in somewhere right over the top so that as I'm out there and I get a nice fish or something, I can just reach in here, throw the bag over, put the fish in the bag and keep it in the water. Hopefully safe from seals and everything else. And then last, my dive weights, I've noticed that it actually sits better in between my legs. So I just put it through here and clip it in. And then last but not least, I've got a dive flag. It sits in here, clip it in, bada bing. So I left the seat off today just because it's a short paddle and it's easier to get in and out of without it. But normally on long paddles where we're doing a couple, two, three, four miles, um, definitely want a seat in there. Some people don't use leashes on their paddles. Um, I prefer to while I'm paddling, but it's really important to remember not to leash your oar to the boat while you're launching or coming back in. Because if you flip, this can easily tang tangle you up and drown you very quickly. Um, so I'm thankful for all the safety oriented guys out there before me that taught me several tricks and tips. And I hope that this um, is at least helpful in seeing how I set up my kayak. Hope you guys have a good day and go get some fish.